Let's talk to Mr. Luis Alvarez, the CEO of Alvarez Technology Group, and find out what's happening in the ever-changing world of technology. Welcome back to the Costa Report, Mr. Alvarez. How are you today, Rebecca? I'm fine. <laughs> We've had our share of uh, technical faux pas here, and all I can do is laugh. You know, you 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 put your hands up to the heavens and you say, "Is this? Are, are you enjoying this? Are you having fun?" <laughs> Sometimes that's the best approach. It is. So, what's the latest news in technology? Well, Rebecca, you know, there are technological innovations that can be cold and boring, and we've seen lots of those. But yeah. then there are some really freaking cool technologies out there that make you say, what the? You know, and, and I recently learned about one of these technologies. You watched Star Trek back in the day, right? Uh, well, back in the day, well, yes. As a matter of fact, I was a pretty big fan. Yeah, sorry, rhetorical <laughs> question. You know, it's hard to believe that that show premiered 46 years ago. Oh, and, my goodness. Yeah, I know. We age ourselves. But, yeah. you know. Since then, we've seen a lot of the Star Trek pretend gadgets turned into real devices that we use every day, like the communicator, which became, you know, the mobile phone, or the tricorder, which became, you know, the, the first tablet computer. But the device that most impressed me, aside from the transporter, by the way, was the replicator. If you recall, that was that magical gizmo that you were able to use to create anything you needed on demand, even food. Right. Well, it turns out, yeah. It, well, it turns out that the replicator may be the next Star Trek pretend gadget to become reality. It, it starts with a concept known as 3D printing. Now, think about a standard printer that prints on a flat sheet of paper, and then consider what that device might be able to do if it could print in three dimensions. Rather than using ink, a 3D printer uses layers of material like plast or plastic, rubber, or titanium to create a three-dimensional object. Like a model, you, you mean? Like a model, yeah. You know, it, using 3D printing, you, you, you know, forego the traditional uh, method of, of casting and molding to manufacture a thing. Instead, you use a computer to design the, the thing you want to make, and then you send the specs that, that uh, the computer creates to a special printer that goes to work printing or manufacturing the thing, and voila, it's ready for you, just like uh, the replicator. Okay, that really sounds a little out of this world, even for Star Trek. Are you telling us that this 3D printing technology is actually being used today? Yeah, absolutely, and not just by small startups working on the fringes. For example, the U.S. Air Force is using 3D printing to manufacture components for their unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, as, as they're commonly called. And BMW is using this technology to print uh, or manufacture some devices for their cars, which saves them over 50 uh, eight percent or so of the cost of building those same things using traditionally or traditional manufacturing techniques. In fact, some people are predicting that 3D printing and similar technologies will profoundly change the way we manufacture products in the very near future. Uh, so much so that it could completely change the way things are made. You know, imagine what the future looks like. You're riding your bike along some steep trail and you break the front forks. Rather than go to the bike shop and have them order the part and wait for it to get fixed, you go home, you call up the bike manufacturer's website, download the specs for the bike fork from their site for you know, a fee of some sort, and then you send it to your 3D printer, and it prints the part overnight while you sleep. And in the morning, you install your newly minted part on the bike, and you're done. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah, it sounds cool, but it's so hard to believe. How realistic is the scenario you're describing? I'm having a hard time believing that these 3D, 3D printers actually exist. Well, like I said, companies like BMW and, and government agencies like the Air Force are, are already doing it. Um, but it gets even more interesting. Uh, there's a gentleman that you may know, Peter Thiel, who mm -hmm. co-founded PayPal, mm -hmm. a billionaire with more money than he knows what to do with, apparently. And he's investing in a company called Modern Meadow, which is developing something called bioprinting. Bioprinting. Okay, this is sounding like weird science. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it is weird science, but it's a good thing, um, especially if you like me. Uh, what Modern Meadow is trying to do is to use 3D printing technology to manufacture uh, lifelike replicas of traditional meat products like pork chops or ribeye steaks without having to go through the hassle of farming livestock. Uh, some of the motivation of the company is to go after that small segment of the market that's made up of you know, vegetarians or, or vegans that, that don't eat meat for ethical reasons and, and folks with religious restrictions in their, in their diets. You know, what could be more kosher than uh, meat, or meat spilling forth from a printer rather than tainted farm animals, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, and aside from creating the, the perfect filet mignon, you know, 3D printing has some seriously beneficial uh, applications when it comes to uh, bioprinting. Scientists are already experimenting with, with it to uh, 
you know, when it comes to regenerative medicine, the idea here is that someday doctors will be able to print custom design person specific organs to replace a failed organ. You know, imagine a day when you can go to the doctor and rather than have to wait for a donor, uh, she just takes a DNA sample from you and uh, prints the organ while while you wait and, you know, while it's uh, ready to be put into you. It, it really is the, what the future looks like. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm speechless. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm no, speechless. This is not what I thought we would be talking about today. <laughs> we need to do a whole program on this bioprinting um, because it sounds like if we can reproduce organs, first of all, what would be the materials? What would you load in the ink cartridge? I, I mean, well, right now we're loading trays of paper and ink. But I'm trying to understand how they get the materials in there. Well, they use bio cellulose material, the, the wow. same sort of thing that, that uh, you know, they, they build in a lab. And, and obviously this is not going to happen next week or next year, uh, but it's what scientists are working on. And they've already built really, really small um, bio organs, you know, things like uh, fingernails and, and teeth. Um, so, you know, the, the idea that they can uh, manufacture an organ that's, you know, designed to fit into your body using your DNA so it can't be rejected, it's what they're aiming for, and it's going to happen, uh, you know, sometime in the next decade. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're right, and uh, it's just frightening. <laughs> so uh, We're out of time, but as always, it, it is a pleasure to hear from you again, and I think we look forward to finding out even more in our next program. Well, thank you, Rebecca. And this is Louis Alvarez of the Alvarez Technology Group reminding everyone that when it comes to technology, forewarned is forearmed.